be seated. I would encourage you to turn in your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 25. As together we continue on in the book of Acts, this continuing testimony of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ through his church as it grew and as it spread throughout the world. We remember that the Lord Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 1, before he ascended into heaven, he gave the apostles that great assurance that they would be his witnesses in Jerusalem and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, that the gospel message would go uh, to Rome and then far beyond it, to places that the apostles didn't even know about, that eventually the gospel would be known from Jerusalem to Irian Jaya, as uh, one particular book on missions uh, puts it. So we know that the Lord is keeping that, that great promise. We see how he began to keep it in the book of Acts, and as we look about us today, we see the gospel continuing to go forth. There is not a place upon this earth, not a continent, and hardly even an island at this point in time where the name of Jesus is completely unknown. And we are grateful to God for that. But we know that uh, as the gospel went forth, it was attended with persecution. We know that we have three great enemies. Luther identified them correctly as, uh, who were they? Who were the three enemies? That he had? The world, the flesh, and the devil. They are our great tormentors, the ones who stand against us and who do not like to see the gospel go forth. But we are grateful that through Christ we have that power that animates us, that keeps us uh, able to continue on in the spirit. And we see Paul here, although he was one, one man uh, standing alone in the midst of a, a great assembly, yet we will see that he is able to speak for God 